Hello ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is Papa Bale and welcome to the channel. What we're currently looking at here is a 180 pulse motor, 180 degree pulse motor. Um, these are bifiler coils wound parallel. There's no twisting involved with these coils. Uh, but they're from beginning to end 20 and 30 gauge. So they're 10 gauges apart. One, uh, the 20 gauge is a drive and the 30 gauge is a trigger. And when you're using an external trigger, the 30 and the 20 are both part of the drive in a four parallel circuit. Over here we have Mini Me. It's virtually the same thing, except you're going to see a, a really big difference. Um, now, for this build, currently, the trigger strand for this coil is triggering this coil. And the trigger strand in here is triggering this one. So I flipped them. It gives a little speed burst. It gives kind of the impression that, they're, that it's an external trigger. And at the same time, having both of them do that gives it the, the bonus from having them be electrified. And that's this light turns on. Um, in order to, to run the SG though, you have to have the trigger inside the coil that has to happen or, or you don't get the light. The light will not light up without both of them being in, in a coil together. Now, they don't have to, like I just explained, they don't have to be part of the same coil. They just both have to be being used. One is a drive and one is a trigger in the same bobbin. Okay, that's all that means. Because the interaction between the two, the trigger and the drive in this coil, is what causes the light to turn on. It's not either strand, it's both of them together causes the light to go on. When it's on, of course. Not just any time it wants to, but when I turn it on... So we're going to go straight up to 9 volts, the 9 range, 9 to 10, and that automatically will turn on. So we'll even turn it up a little bit higher. Turn up to 12. And it's not really blinking anymore. You can kind of see it blinking in the camera. But only in the camera now. Alright, so we're at 12.2 uh, and 7.7 .7 amps in. We're going to spin this one. Holy smoke. That's at 3.2 amps. That's a lot of amps. So we'll just go three. We'll go up to nine. Nine volts or so. Might give this little one another another start. Wow, one point two amps. The amps are just blowing when that little one gets started. One point four. Maybe we'll just start the little one. <laughs> Look at it go though. Look at it go. Um, 1.4 amps. Fourteen thirty-four. That little beast is ripping. Fourteen hundred and thirty-four RPMs at nine volts. 
five five ninety three six hundred for the big one and fourteen hundred and thirty for the little one. amazing speed this is just a tremendous difference between the light rotor and the heavy one and that light one it's solid so it's heavy in its own regard but it's it's light so it's going to spin for a long time all right but this is why we did this we're just going to run the little one because it, it, it was drawing a tremendous amount of amps them together was drawing like 1.4 just at 9 volts so we're going to see how much the little one does on its own Huh, I don't know if it's working. Maybe the big one has to be started up for just to, just to start. Let's see. Yeah, maybe it does. All right, let's tone it back a little bit. See, it doesn't even need cores, and look at how easily that starts. Oh, 2.4 amps. What the hey? Why does the amps go so, so high with that little disc? 2.2. 2.1. Maybe there's a PNP in here somewhere. Like this last transistor right here might be a PNP because these amps are crazy. 1.8. That is going spectacularly fast. Let's check it out. Fourteen forty two, seven seventy eight, fifteen fifty five. Holy smolians, man. That's that's awesome. I love, I'm gonna make little rotors from now on. No, maybe not, but I'm gonna make a few more little ones. That is great. So basically, fifteen thousand fifty RPMs, fifteen hundred and fifty RPMs, more like it. Oh, so cool! I'm so happy, man. This little rotor that I had for my gyroscope, which is currently. You know, I took it apart to try and put it together a different way. And I should have never done that. That was the dumbest thing I could have done because I never put it back together. Um, and I'm, I've already, like, <laughs> you know, scalped it for pieces and everything. Yeah, from now on, like, if somebody gives me a suggestion to change something in a current build, I'm just going to build a new one with that suggestion incorporated. Because this is... I'm kind of upset that I took that apart because it was really smooth and it worked the first time and you know it was just one of those builds that was okay and then you know people weren't satisfied with that so and I listened to them but it's okay you know I got to learn my my own uh, 
limitations here. Uh, so basically, whenever I finish building something, if I ever do, I will chalk it as done, and we're not going to play with it anymore. We can play with it, but we're not going to build with it anymore. All right, and yes, I tried all these magnets, south facing this way, north, south facing up, and north facing this way, and I spun it. And it went pretty fast, not as fast as it did with north facing out, or south facing out. But, uh, and it drew like twice as many amps as it facing out. <laughs> so it's like not something I'm going to do, but it was pretty fun to check out, see what happened. It does spin. It just doesn't spin faster, and it doesn't spin, and it costs more amps. So, I mean, it's just not, not going to work as something that I'm going to use. This little devil is awesome. 1,555 RPMs and just moving right along. All right. So, this time I'm going to swap this, this plug for that one right there. And we're going to go from there. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out. Have a great day. Please subscribe. Bye now.